Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 3130, Modern Geometries for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be a professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In the previous lecture, lecture 14, of course, uh, we introduced the uh, congruence axioms relative to a line segment, and then we defined uh, the idea of a congruence geometry, one which is an ordered geometry plus the six axioms of congruence. We mentioned the first three, and I promised you that in the next lecture, which of course is now lecture 15, that we would introduce the notion, well, the congruence axioms for angles. Uh, the last three are very similar to the first three. Um, as a reminder, we defined, well, I shouldn't say we defined, we introduced an undefined term for congruence of line segments, for which then we got segment translation, transitivity of, of segment congruence, and we had segment addition. Um, in this video, we're going to introduce the idea of congruence between angles, so if we have two angles, ABC and DEF, we can say that two angles are congruent. It is an undefined term. And again, it's gonna be a homonym to we use, talk about congruence of line segments. We're not gonna say that an angle is congruent to a line segment. A segment can be congruent to another segment. An angle can be congruent to another angle. They are different things, but they are of course related. We will use the same symbol, of course, to represent congruence. We say angle ABC is congruent to DEF, and we'll use this symbol that we see here on the screen, all right? Um, so with this notion of congruence of segments and congruence of angles, we can now define what it means for two triangles to be congruent, okay? So recall that a triangle is gonna be, the triangle ABC is the intersection of the three angles, ABC, BCA, and CAB. I, I hope I listed all those correctly there. Uh, but a triangle is the, it's the intersection of the three angles associated to it. Uh, so suppose we have two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Um, so then we're going to say that triangles ABC and A prime, B, C, B prime, C prime are congruent if the line segment AB is congruent to A prime, B prime. The line segment BC is congruent to B prime, C prime. The line segment AC is congruent to A prime, C prime. The angle ABC is congruent to A prime, B prime, C prime. The angle BCA is congruent to angle B prime, C prime, A prime. And lastly, that the angle CAB is congruent to the angle C prime, A prime, B prime. So we say that two triangles are congruent to each other if they're three side the, 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 the line segments that form its three sides are congruent and the three angles are congruent. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, introduce the congruence axioms, the remaining three, so C4, C5, C6, um, due to Hilbert's axioms of Euclidean geometry. Um, the first couple, the first two are actually going to be very, very similar to what we saw before. So we're going to take axiom C4 to be angle translation. It's going to be similar to segment translation, and this is how it's going to go. Um, given an angle ABC and given a ray uh, B prime A prime, then there exists a unique ray B prime C prime on each side of the line A prime B prime, such that the angle ABC is congruent to the angle A prime B prime C prime. In particular, on the ray BA and on the side containing the, the point C, uh, that unique ray coincides with BC. So, all right, there's a lot to unravel here. So we have some angle ABC. So imagine we have something like this. Drawing some arrows because these are rays. So we have some point A. Uh, B is the vertex of this thing. C is some other point. So the angle ABC is given here. Um, and so then we have some ray uh, B prime A. So we might get something like the following. some ray a prime b prime like so so the ray emanates from b prime um oh excuse me this is supposed to be the nope that was right uh b prime a prime uh so then we were given we're given the angle we're given a ray segment our angle translation means that we can copy this angle down onto this ray that's below so there exists some ray some point i should say um, well, no, there, there's some ray B prime C prime. So the ray emanates from B prime as well. There's some point C prime right here. And so then we're going to get that this angle is congruent to that one. ABC is congruent to uh, 
A prime, B prime, C prime. Okay, and so just like segment translation, angle translation has this uniqueness statement that if you translate an angle onto itself, um, the congruence in that situation actually has to be equality, right? So if you take, uh, if we take the angle ABC and you translate it onto the ray AB, then the ray that's guaranteed to give you the congruent angle must have been BC, like so. Now with, unlike a segment translation, angle translation actually guarantees uh, the angle can be translated in two different places. Because after all, when you have the ray uh, B prime A, this ray of course can be extended to a line and we know from order geometry that there are two sides of the line. There's this side and that side. So when it comes to angle translation, uh, we can actually translate onto either side of the line. Um, it doesn't really matter. So we get this angle A prime B prime C prime, or this angle A prime B prime C double prime. They're both going to be congruent to the original angle ABC. So when you work with segment, uh, angle translation, you do have to, of course, pick which side of the line you're doing. And on each side, there'll be a unique ray uh, that gives you a congruent angle. And of course, when you copy it back onto yourself, uh, that has to be the exact same thing, the exact same rays. You get equality in that situation. All right, so angle translation sounds a lot like segment translation, but we gotta change the appropriate parts so that it's compatible with angles as opposed to segments. Um, axiom C5, which we will call transitivity of angle congruence, um, it sounds a lot like transitivity of segment congruence. We get that if the angle ABC is congruent to the angle A prime B prime C prime, and the angle A prime B prime C prime is congruent to the angle A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, then we can conclude that the angle ABC is congruent to the angle um, A double prime, B, B double prime, and C double prime, like so. Now, if we were just to uh, stop right here for one moment, I'm, I'm not gonna even introduce the third ax of the, the sixth axiom, I should say, just quite yet. We will do that uh, of course, in a moment. But uh, let me scroll up so we can see the angle translation. Angle translation is essentially the same axiom, but for angles as opposed to segments. And in particular, we have this uniqueness statement, right? This, this ray is gonna be unique. There's only one of them. And of course, if you translate onto yourself, um, you get equality. So that's built into the cake there. We have transitivity here. Now this uniqueness statement is very, very important because when we talked about angle congru uh, excuse me segment congruence we use the uh, the the uniqueness statement of segment translation to argue and prove that the relation of segment congruence is a reflexive a reflexive uh relation because angle translation likewise has that uniqueness statement the analogous uniqueness statement we can infer that by the exact same proof that angle congruence is likewise going to be a reflexive, a reflexive relation. By axioms, we have that it's transitive. Is it symmetric? Hmm, hmm, think about this. Um, when we introduced the segment congruence with its three axioms, we then proved um, as a proposition that segment congruence is actually a symmetric relationship. Um, and how do we do that? Well, I'm not going to go through all of the arguments here, but basically the argument came down to we use segment translation, then we use transitivity of segment of segment congruence, and then we use the uniqueness of segment translations. So we use segment translation again to argue that segment uh, congruence is a symmetric relationship. And since you're reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, this then proves that segment congruence is an equivalence relation. I am gonna leave it as an exercise to the viewer here to prove that angle congruence is likewise an equivalence relation because the uniqueness statement of angle translation will give us angle reflexivity. Um, transitivity, of course, falls from the axiom. And then the proof of angle symmetry with regard to congruence will come about from using angle translation Right, you you take one of the angles, translate to the other, use transitivity there, and then you use the uniqueness to get that you start off with the same angle. So without any further proof, I can actually say that angle congruence is an equivalence relation. And this is one of the powers of the axiomatic method because angle congruence and segment congruence essentially have the same axioms, the same proof applies and we get an equivalence relation on angle congruence, okay? 
Um, the last, the last of the congruence axioms, axiom C6, is going to be a little bit different. If you recall for segment congruence, our last axiom was segment addition, it allowed us to, you know, un unite two segments together and guarantee statements of congruence. Um, it would make sense to have an analogous statement for angle angle congruence here, like a so-called angle addition, um, for which we will have angle addition as a theorem later on. We don't want to take it as its axiom because if we left it alone, if we took angle addition as the axiom, then we have this problem. Yeah, we can develop segment con congruence in one side. We can develop angle congruence on a different side, but how do they mesh together? How do they interact with one another? After all, the whole point of segment addition was to see how segment congruence interacts with betweenness of points. We have to make a connection to this new undefined term of congruence with the old undefined terms of incidence and betweenness. So in particular, we need some way of connecting angle congruence to segment congruence. And so instead of taking angle addition as an axiom, we'll prove it as a theorem, and instead we're going to take as our axiom the side angle side axiom, which this is going to be a, tr a triangle congruence statement. So imagine we have two triangles, ABC and A prime, B prime, C prime. So we have these two triangles here, and I'm going to scooch things up a little bit so we can try to draw a picture to give some illustration what's going on here. So we have two triangles. Here's one triangle, and I'll label it. So this is A, B, and C. And then we have some other triangle Give me a little bit more space here. Uh, we have some other triangle, maybe something like this. And so we'll call this one A prime, this one B prime, and this one C prime. So we have these two triangles, these six points here. We're going to assume that the side of the segment AB is congruent to the segment A prime, B prime. We're going to assume that the angle ABC is congruent to the angle A prime, B prime, C prime. And we're going to assume that the segment BC is congruent to B prime, C prime. And this is where it gets the name side angle side, often denoted AS, uh, excuse me, SAS for short, side angle side, because we have this side that's congruent, the angle's congruent, and then the side here. And in particular, the angle is between uh, the two sides. That's very important. Because um, if we had like some angle side side or something like that, that gets a little bit more complicated. We'll talk about that some other time. But the side angle side axiom then says that if we have this congruence, side angle side congruence between the triangles, then in fact the triangles are actually congruent to each other. And so remember our definition of congruence of triangles. If the triangles are congruent, that means all of their sides must be congruent, right? So the other side we don't know anything about, AC and A prime. C prime. If the triangles were congruent, then we can infer that those sides are congruent. And likewise, the angles, the angle C would have to be congruent to angle C prime, and angle A would have to be congruent to A prime, right? So these red marks we see right here, if we know those are congruent, then we can assume the other parts are congruent as well. And that's the power of these triangle congruences. If we know some of the parts are congruent, then we can know the other parts are congruent. And you're going to see us um, because of side angle side and its consequences, many of our geometric proofs and congruence geometry will be things like, oh, we're going to prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other um, because of some side angle side condition or something else. And then we'll take some unknown side or some unknown angle and then say, oh, these sides are congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We're going to use that observation all the time. And so that's a very, very powerful, uh, the side angle side axiom is very, very powerful. We will approve angle addition in the future, not in this video, uh, because side angle side is actually more powerful. And in particular, it connects together congruence of segments and congruence of angles. Because how are they related? Side con uh, segment congruence and angle congruence? Well, that happens from, of course, triangle congruence, which the side angle side axiom offers us.